God's reservation of blackness and darkness for Christless professors. God's reservation of blackness and darkness for Christless professors. Amen. Thank you, Ushers. My beloved, our text today is the conclusion of the five-part sermon series of the Reservations of God. The subject matter today deals with those who profess Christ before others. Now, I want to give you a chance to get something to write here. But it deals with those who profess Christ before others, but in reality, they spend much of their time rebelling against him and everything that he stands for. You, God has a reservation for those who profess Christ before other folks. But in reality, they spend much of their time rebelling against God. Mm -hmm. You'll find that in, in Numbers, the 16th cha uh, chapter, and also 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, and Hebrews 10 and 26. Uh, as I've said on so many occasions, there is a war going on. You may not hear any uh, gunfire. You may not see any smoke, but there is a spiritual war going on. Now, uh, these individuals, are uh, they individuals who profess themselves to be wise, but uh, they're ignorant of the things of God. You've got to be careful about folks that know something about everything, but know nothing about God. You've got to be careful about that. It, it sounds good, it looks good. They, what we say is they talk a good game, if you will. Uh, but but uh, they, they're ignorant of the things of God, and, and not only that, but they don't even reverence yeah. the things of God. They don't respect the things of God. Amen? Uh, it used to be a time where you, 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 you wouldn't dare uh, see folks uh, sitting around on the steps of the church drinking wine and shooting dice well. and playing cards. Mm -hmm. that, that, but that, that, that's gone by the wayside now. Mm -hmm. uh, right. They don't care nothing about that. Amen. No reverence for God at all. It used to be a time when uh, they would see uh, the church sisters, the deaconess, the mothers of the church, the missionaries walking down the street. They tone things down a little bit, you know. They don't want any oil. They, they respect that. Amen. But, but, but now they'll knock you down. Huh? Don't care nothing about that. These are folk who are ignorant of the things of God, and they don't reverence uh, or have a, and what by reverence I mean have a holy respect mm -hmm. and a holy fear for the things of God. Mm -hmm. God has reserved blackness and darkness uh, for those who falsely profess Christ to others when they have never confessed him before God and before uh, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Huh? They, 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 they profess him before other people. Amen? Uh, it has been said that you can fool uh, some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Amen? And so these uh, professors, they, first of all, I want, I want you to be able to recognize. You got to recognize. See, a whole lot of us, we get in uh, conversation uh, with folks, and, and you don't know whether they're a professor or a confessor. Yeah. You get in a conversation with them, and, and, and pretty soon you'll find out, you begin to find out something about them because a lot of times you have people who want to argue scripture. Uh -huh. I'm going to leave you alone in a minute. Amen? Okay. And so these uh, professors, uh, they resist sound doctrine. That, that, that's how you know you're dealing with a professor and not a confessor. Amen? Uh, they resist sound doctrine, and not only that, but they cause other people to be, to stumble. Yeah. Huh? See, bad doctrine or the word of God not rightly divided can cause other people to stumble. Amen. Huh? And, 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 and you can stumble in your relationship with God. Amen. There are a whole lot of folks that uh, they've listened to some professors and they've stumbled and they believe that they're saved, but they're not. That's how serious it is. And so professors can cause folks to stumble. Amen. And not only that, but 
uh, professors also uh, are part of the Sunday school lesson this morning. Uh, you'll find them murmuring against God. Mm -hmm. And they murmur against the things of God. And not only that, but you, when you find people that find fault with God all the time, well, that's a professor and not a confessor. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, 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 they find fault with God. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 10 and uh, uh, Numbers 14, 28, 7 through 29. Exodus 16, 7 through 9, and Romans 9, um, uh, 32 and 33. Now, uh, professors, they have a different kind of spirit than everybody else. Mm -hmm. I want you to watch this right here. When you run into a professor, they have a Cain spirit, C A I N. Mm -hmm. They have a Cain spirit rather than an Abel spirit. Amen? Uh, 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 uh. After Cain killed his brother, uh, he also founded, are uh, y'all listen to say amen. amen? He also founded a new religion. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. That was based on violence and words. Well, okay. they have, they, people have a Cain spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They have a Cain spirit. Amen? And so whenever you find a person like that, they go, why do you think we have so many religions in the world? That's a Cain spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, not only that, God has always required uh, a blood sacrifice for the remission of sin. Yes, God has always required that. Yes, yes. Abel brought God a lamb. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me, please? Yeah. Yeah. Abel brought God a lamb. Cain brought God some fruit out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And it was a product of his own hand. Well, can I work in here? Yeah. You got to be careful what you bring God. Yes, Amen. Huh? A yeah. whole lot of people bring God an offering and they, and they think they please God. Yeah. He, 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 ha, ha, ha. God's not pleased with that. Right. Because first of all, he knows your heart. Yeah. He knows you can do better. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and, but he knows also that you don't know better. Yeah. Amen. He knows that you're a professor instead of a confessor. Well, when you right. find people that cannot understand and cannot relate to how God wants an offering, can I help you? Huh? I, 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 that's a problem. Uh, and, and so God is not a Burger King God. Yeah. Uh, so we have to be mindful of how we deal with and how we interact with God. Amen. Yeah. Can, uh, Genesis 1, uh, Genesis 4, rather, 1 through 8, Revelations 2 and 14, 2 Timothy 3 and 8, Hebrews 11 and 4, and 1 John 3 and 12. And just for good measure, Hebrews 9 and 22. God has reserved a severe, a severe judgment. Severe judgment. For those who profess Christ before others, when in reality they don't know him at all. They despise doctrine, uh, and they despise the doctrine of the imminent pre-tribulation rapture. We have folks that don't understand the rapture, that, we, we, that, that God's coming back to his church, that we're going to be raptured up, and they don't understand that, or they have it in the wrong place. Huh? So, some people believe it all, it's already happened. Well, if it's already happened, there's no reason for me to be here. All right. Huh? And so they, they have doctrine out of context. Mm -hmm. uh, they have not studied the word of God. They read it. Mm -hmm. But they didn't study it. Amen? And then they don't believe it. Yeah. So, so 2 Peter 3, 3-5. Three they've heard the truth, but because they are professors and not genuine believers in Christ, they cause other folks to error. Have you ever been set up by somebody in church? You ever been set up by somebody in church that you thought knew something? Mm. And you thought was telling you the right thing to do? Uh -huh. huh? And, and, and they told you to do where they stand back and look. Uh -huh. <laughs> and caused you to stumble. Yeah. But, but, but put they guard themselves and try not to ever let anybody see them stumble. Mm -hmm. right. I'm going to help you in a minute. And so these are these are these are professors, amen. They cause folks to stumble. They cause folks to error in the things of God, amen. And not only that, uh, but 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 uh, Christ uh, is, 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 is Christ cannot be a sacrifice for professors. His blood cannot be a sin sacrifice for professors. I want you to hear that. Uh, Hebrews 10 and 26, Isaiah 5, 
8 through 23, and Numbers 3, 31 and 16. Now, Jesus is going to return for the church. Huh? Mm -hmm. When he returns for the church, she uh, is to be without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. That's what the Word of God says. The Word of God also tells us that professors in Christ, but not believers in Christ, become a spot and a stain on the church. Well, mm. Oh, come on here. Th th there are some folks that uh, they don't uh, build up the church in any kind of way. In actuality, they become a spot and a stain on the church. Mm -hmm. huh? They become dead weight for the church. That's what professors do. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes. And so, uh, I, well, I'm going to give you that address, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 20 and 22. So they become a stain and a spot on the church. But the Lord says, I'm coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing. So that tells me that there's going to be a separation. Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to leave you alone in a minute. God says that these professors, they're like clouds without water. Hmm? Uh, they're like trees without fruit. Amen? And you know, uh, the fig tree got in trouble with Jesus, don't yeah, you? Yeah. Huh? Uh, that's why that's why he had to curse the fig tree because it was standing there looking all pretty with some leaves on it with no feet. That, that's where a whole lot of professors are uh, in the church and before God. They stand up and they look good and they look like they're in church. Amen? But they have no fruit to back. Huh? And, and, and that's, all, that's all they do. Huh? Uh, they get dressed up and they come to church. That's all they do. Uh, but they have no real intrinsic value that they're offering God. Amen? And so as a result of that, uh, these individuals, the Bible says that they're like trees without fruit. And God calls them a, a twice dead tree. Study the text. Mm -hmm. A twice dead tree. Uh, they share a gospel that only leads to dryness and death while pretending to provide a spiritual feast. They only produce spiritual famine. Yeah. One of the things that we're looking at in our world today is we're looking at folks who flock to churches. Many times, they're, they're flocking and they're eating garbage. Uh, yeah, they, they, they go in hungry and they come out still hungry, amen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they have uh, what's called an experience while they're there. Yeah. Well, I stop by to tell you that you're going to need more than an experience uh, to, to, on this tedious journey, amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're going to need the Lord on this journey. Yeah. Uh, you, I, you don't need to feel good every every, every Sunday. Oh, and you right. just come in and feel good for a couple, three hours, and then yeah. go back out on the battlefield and get cut up and beat down. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody in here. And so uh, we have to be careful. Uh, Matthew 7, 17 through 20, and then uh, Luke 13, 6 and 9, and Proverbs 25 and 14. The word of God tells us that professors of Christ are like raging waves, huh? Way, raging waves of the sea who foam out their own rage and are wandering stars whom God has reserved for darkness and blackness. Uh, they only rage for a little while. They only foam for a little while, amen? And, 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 but they foam and they rage long enough to contaminate and cause other folks to stumble and fall down. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, they, 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 they feed themselves, amen? Uh, they don't, they're not concerned about uh, feeding the souls of other people. They feed themselves, amen? Yep. And so God calls their work uh, raging waves of the sea and wandering stars because their ministry is deceptive. Oh, you. Uh, you don't hear me good, do you? Let me tell you something. The, the best way to become deceived the best and the easiest way to come to become uh, deceived. Don't pick up this book. Don't read it. And don't study it. Yeah. Best way to become deceived. Mm -hmm. At that point, you'll believe anything. At that point, you'll do anything if I tell you to. Mm -hmm. And then you come up and tell you, well, it's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And don't get it wrong. A, 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 a person, a, a professor can take a verse of scripture uh, and turn it around and make it sound just like it's all right. That's what they do. They give you half truth. Yeah. They give you just enough truth to be uh, pretty much convincing because you don't know because you haven't read, you haven't studied. Yeah. Huh? And so that brings about deception. Amen? And so uh, uh, you have to be careful here. Uh, when you're on a battlefield, there's a mind. Every, every, 
everywhere. everywhere. You, you, you got to watch how you step. You got to watch yeah. how you walk because you're subject to get blown up out here. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, and so uh, the issue here is that um, they, 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 they have a rage, amen? A raging sea who falls out their own rage and they're wondering stars whom uh, God has reserved darkness and blackness for the, the ministry here. Yeah. Their ministry is a ministry that is deceptive. It is a moment in time, or like a moment of brilliance, and then it fades into nothing. Uh, that's just kind of ministry. It springs up, and then that's all it is to it. It's full of empty promises. It's almost kind of like having a ministry, and your ministry is a is a um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it, it, it it's, a, it's it's a it's a top down ministry, if you will. Uh, you got a pyramid. It's like a pyramid scheme. Only the people at the top benefit. Everybody else feed the pyramid. Talk to me somebody in here. Whole lot of times you can get caught up in some stuff. And, and you wonder, you, you, you look at the top and you man, what is that going to happen to me? Never. <laughs> never. It's never going to happen to you. But because you're part of the pyramid. It's only the, it's only the few at the top uh, that grab back. Amen? Uh, Isaiah 57 and 20, Isaiah 56 and 11, and then John 10, uh, uh, 12 and 13. Now, um, professors proclaim to have a powerful ministry, but it deceives many because it is void of the rightly divided word of God. That's the issue. Again, don't ever go to church. And, and, and you, you can rail on Pastor Harrison all you want. I'm good. I, I don't have a problem with that. But don't ever go to anybody's church without your body. Mm -hmm. Don't ever listen to anybody unless you're following along uh -huh. and you're understanding what's being said. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. how clever it is. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so they proclaim to have a wonderful ministry, but it deceives many because it's void of the word rightly divided. We have gotten in a whole lot of trouble because we will not rightly divide the word of God. Let me give you an example real quick and I'm going to move on. Uh, you've heard folks say, come as you are. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Nothing wrong with that. That's, that's exactly what the word is saying. Yeah. But here's where, here's where we go off the track. Okay. Come as you are, but don't stay as you are. Yeah. All right. Huh? Mm -hmm. You see, whenever you come into the presence of the Lord and the knowledge of the Lord, the, the, the word of God will change you. Right. Uh, it'll make you a new creature. Right. You, you are not to come as you are and stay as you are. Then, then you make God alive. Yeah. Huh? And so when we look at this, uh, you'll find that in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4, Romans 3 and 13, uh, Psalms uh, 5 and 9, and Romans 16 and 18, and certainly Proverbs 26 and 28. Now, Enoch, which is what your scripture referred to. He was the seventh the son of Adam. And the Bible says that uh, Enoch prophesied what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Enoch prophesied what you was going to talk about later on. Uh -huh. And then when mm -hmm. Enoch uh, finished prophesying and because of uh, Enoch's relationship with God, uh, the Bible said that uh, uh, Enoch just walked on off with the Lord. Yeah. He just took off walking, just walked on off with the Lord. Yeah. You see, when you have the right relationship with God, that's what can happen to you. Amen? And so, what was uh, 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 Enoch prophesying? Well, here's what Enoch said. Enoch said that uh, in the book of Genesis, Enoch said, well, uh, the Lord uh, is going to send his son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> And his son is going to give his life uh, uh, for whosoever will. And then he said uh, that his son is going to suffer, bleed, and die. He said they're going to hang his son out on a hill called Calvary. Just hold me just one minute. But, but, but he said that, 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 that the Jesus was going to hang on Calvary's cross. And then Jesus was going to shed his precious blood. And then that Jesus was going to die. And they were going to take Jesus down and put him in Joseph's new tomb, and that Jesus was going to stay dead three days and three nights. But then, uh, then Enoch said, but early on the third day, that Jesus is going to be resurrected from the dead, and that Jesus is going to have all power in heaven and earth in his hand. 
I'm not trying to tell you that he not said that way back in Genesis. But then, not only that, but he said that, that the Lord is coming back with 10,000 uh, 10, saints. Yeah. Well, who will yeah. these saints be when the Lord comes back? The Lord will come back and he'll have so many saints with him until you're not able to count them all. I stop by to tell you today if you've been born today, when the Lord comes back again, we're going to come back with him. And so you and I are going to be part of these saints. There will be saints of God and there will be the host of heaven and we'll come back. But I want to tell you here that God has a judgment reserved. He has darkness reserved. It is in eternity. It is in hell. And then I'm going to leave you alone here. But hell is a place of everlasting fire. Started because of man's sin. God started the fire because of my sin. God started the fire because of your sin. And, and not only that, but hell contains different departments and different compartments. It will consume all humanity that died in rebellion against God. You've got to be careful how you die. If you die in rebellion of God, if you die man and God, if you die a, prof a professor but not a confessor, the Lord will deal with you. And not only that, but God will set the mountains on fire. The reason this is reserved judgment is so severe. The reason that it's so permanent is that while professors were ungodly, Christ died for the ungodly. You don't hear me yet. Jesus did not sin. Jesus was sinless. But he died for the ungodly. I'm glad today that he died for me. I was ungodly. On my way to hell. Didn't have a God on my side. But Jesus died for the ungodly. And then I'm going to leave you alone here. But the record is that he died for those who refuse to reverence him and believe in him. When Jesus came to this sin cursed world, he did not come to be ministered to, but he came to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. His blood was the price that was paid for my acceptance. My God, I stop by on my way to heaven to tell somebody that I had a bill that I could not pay. Do you have a bill that you cannot pay? I got a bill that I cannot pay. But I want to tell you today that Jesus paid my bill. I don't care. He didn't get the down payment. He didn't put it in the layaway. But he paid my bill. The songwriter said, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin and left the prison stain. But his blood washed it white as snow. I gotta get out of here and leave you alone. But I came by to tell somebody that Jesus, he came to suffer. He came to bleed. He came to die in my place and in my in your place. But there's some other news that nobody wants to talk about. You don't hear me yet. The Bible said that when Jesus was raised from the dead, he tabernacled here about 40 days. I'm gonna leave you alone here. You start waving the folks. I'm he that was dead. But I'm not alive. I'm gonna leave you alone here. But the Bible said that Jesus caught the man out of the cloud and went on back to glory. I'm gonna leave you alone here. But there were some men standing around, just gazing up in the sky. 
sky. And that's the condition of the church today. That's the condition of some professors today. We're just standing around gazing in the sky. Jesus said, go in to my mind, God, and work. And whatsoever is right, I'll pay you. But we're standing around now, just gazing. Got three or four members on the usher board. But we're just gazing. Got two or three members on the deacon board. We're just standing around gazing. Like everything is all right. When he told me and he told you, go and compel me to come on into my house. That my house may be full. But while you're standing around gazing, the same Jesus is coming back again. The same way that he left, he's coming, riding on a cloud. Oh, leave me alone here. But I got to go. But John was writing. John was out on the island of Patmos. He got sent out, banished on the island for preaching the gospel. And so John sat down and John stopped writing. And the scripture said that John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I got to get out of here and leave you alone. If you occupy and if you reverence the Lord's day, the spirit will show up on the Lord's day. But the Bible said John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And when you are in the spirit, help me Holy Ghost to make your word plain. When you're in the spirit, the Bible said John, he saw heaven open wide. John, he saw one who was called faithful and true. He saw somebody that would come and judge and make war. John was in the spirit on the long day. John said, the one I saw, he had eyes like balls of fire. John said, when I looked again, and I took a long look, the Bible said, John said he had crowns on his head. And then John said, when I looked down at his feet, his feet were like polished brass. John said, then when I looked up at his head, his head was like lamb wool. And then John said, I had to step back and look at what he had on. And John said that he had a name that nobody knew but himself. And John said, when I looked at him, he had a robe on that had been dipped in blood. And his name was called the Word of God. And so John said that Jesus is the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. And then John said, when I looked at his robe again, I saw on his robe and on his right thigh that he had a name. And that name was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And then Paul left it on record that one day, by and by, after a while, every knee. Yeah. Every tongue is going to confess, they're going to confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of oh God. I got to get out of here, but I'm going to stop by here and tell you today, I stop by every once in a while when you're past them. God's folk, and when it seems like ain't nobody doing nothing, you want to know sometimes that the word been getting through. I heard the Bible say that my word is a sword, it cut in, it cut out, it will not return void. And then my mind run back as a little boy, they used to sing a little old song to try to get the saints stirred up. You don't hear me. Sometimes we can come to church and we're so cold until we can't praise the Lord. And so the saints of God used to sing a little song to raise the spirit in the church. You see, God is a spirit. And if you're going to contact, if you're going to interact, if you're going to talk to God, you need the spirit. And so the church members had a little praise chant that they used to sing in the old landmark church. You 